contact building two, ground floor. Even if I had my eyes closed, I'd still know that that's none other than Vin Diesel. Now, I am surprised that it isn't Fast and the Furious 21. Yes, I am. But we're going to be looking at 2020's Ray. Spoiler alert, while I might give you my opinion on the film, that's no substitute for watching it yourself. Links to the film are in the description. As Ray prepares to breach the building, whoever's inside unleashes a barrage of bullets through the door. Against his orders, he breaches the building as soon as they stop to reload. As he checks every corner, he makes his way upstairs until he makes it to where the hostage is being kept. When he's told to drop his gun, he looks around for another option before setting it on the ground. After some short negotiations, he puts down the man that's holding the prisoner hostage, and that's the end of the mission. When he and his squad make it back to the base, he's welcomed by his wife Gina, and they go on a little outing. That night, Gina tries to question if he can maybe make it back in the same shape that he leaves. He assures her that he's just fine, and then he shows her what his body can still do. The next morning, Ray wakes up to find that Gina's gone out to get them breakfast. When he goes to take a bath, he hears footsteps outside, and he finishes them off without any issues. I know that Vin Diesel's getting up there in age, but I can still absolutely see him taking on someone like he does here. I feel like if he had to, he could definitely pick someone up and drop them in a toilet. No doubt. Not to mention, I love how we're getting a nice bit of action this quick in the film. As he rushes out of his room to find Gina, he bumps into a man in the hall, and he falls to the ground soon after. Before his eyes shut, he sees that the man has a syringe that he's used on him. When he wakes up, he's tied to a chair in a meat locker, and the same man comes into the room with a nice little intro. I don't think they could have made a more realistically comfortable modern villain if they tried. The slides, the jacket, the beanie, and the dance all come together to make a believably cocky villain. I know a handful of people off the top of my head that I know would dance like that if they got to have an intro. Comment someone that you think would dance like that. When Ray asks him who he is, we find out that his name is Martin Axe, and he's there to find out who told him about the hostages. When Ray refuses to answer, they bring in Gina and strap her to a chair in front of him. When he gives the same answer, Martin puts a spike attached to an air compressor to her head, and he waits for Ray to give a different answer. When Ray mentions that he only goes where they tell him, Martin acts as though that's a good enough answer, but when Ray tells Gina that everything's going to be okay, that gets shut down quickly. It's not gonna be okay. <gasps> we all saw that coming. What kind of story would be here if he just let them go? Sure enough, he shoots the spike into her head. After Ray comprehends what just happened, he tells Martin that he should just kill him now, otherwise he's going to find him and end him. And for once in these movies, the bad guy takes the advice. He pulls out a gun, thanks him for the advice, and kills him. Do you know how many times the bad guy would have won if he hadn't had to blow up his own ego and have a monologue or some convoluted way of killing the hero? This is my new favorite villain! Of course, the one time the bad guy does what he should, it doesn't matter. Ray wakes up in a laboratory, and he sees KT and Dr. Emil, who's just happy to see Ray still has brain functions. Dr. Emil welcomes him to the facility, and Ray sees that the doctor has some augmented body parts. When he has to remember anything about himself, he finds that he can't even remember his name and Dr. Emil says that his body was donated by the military. The more Ray talks, the more Dr. Emil realizes that he doesn't know he died. The doctor explains that he's the first they've been able to bring back, and that this is his second chance. Emil takes Ray on a tour of the facility and shows him that they're working on rebuilding soldiers. Do we have a company that's working on things like this right now? <clears throat> this seems like useful tech to have. I mean, he just slashed a gash in his hand that would have taken forever to heal, and it's gone just like that. Emil explains that there are tiny nanites in his bloodstream that rebuild him. Later, he takes Ray around the facility to explain some other rebuilt soldiers and their augmentations. KT is immune to inhalants now. Tibbs has cameras that replace the sight he lost, so now he sees everything. And finally, Jimmy Dalton lost his legs, so they engineered new legs. He doesn't believe it at first. Honestly, could you imagine finding out you died, then get introduced to a bunch of super soldiers? I wouldn't believe any of it either. After he has a dream that gives him a glimpse of his memory, he wakes up and decides to test his new strength. Needless to say, he loves his new abilities. While he trains, he spots KT training in a water tank, and he gets caught up in how mesmerizing her movements are. When KT takes him to get a drink, the song that Martin danced to plays over the speaker, and memories flood into his mind. After the memory ends, he packs up a bag and takes a truck from the parking garage. When Emil contacts him through the nanites, he tries to explain to him that he needs him to come back, but the nanites actually start scanning the database for all information on Martin's whereabouts. So that's very handy and very illegal. 
He even learns how to fly by downloading the flight manual straight into his brain. How perfect is that? Meanwhile, Martin's being escorted from his apartment, but Ray finds him by running the GPS for the vehicles that are running a convoy. Sure enough, he traps them in a tunnel by ramming the first truck with a semi. When the dust settles, the team tries to see if they'll be able to push through, but the truck is attacked by Ray. After they think that they've killed him, they all get out to look for more assailants. Before too long, Ray gets up and takes down every single team member in sight. Martin calls his boss and warns him that they finished making Ray, and it becomes clear that this goes deeper than a simple revenge kill. The boss tells him to let the professionals handle putting him down. Just let the professionals we hide handle it. Oh, sure. Small problem, eh? Your guys suck! He's not wrong. This is some close quarter stuff. And they're all looking at him like they're expecting some big game herd to be waiting around the corner of the car door. Plus, if I saw a guy heal like that in front of me, I'd at least want to handle this with a little distance if I could. These guys keep creeping up on him like he'll stop if he's taken by surprise. I mean, he literally gets half of his face blown off and just keeps moving forward. Time to make peace with your maker and hope he thinks you're dead already. There is always the idea that his nanites aren't endless. He has to run out eventually, but no one here was armed like that. Ray can't hear Martin's pleas, but he doesn't care either. He shoots him in cold blood and walks away. The next day, he gets picked up by the doctor and his crew. His tablet literally confirms that he's low on nanites, so that theory's sound. KT asks him if he got what he wanted, and he says that he's done now. When he gets back to the base, Dalton shuts him down and tells him exactly what's going on. Dalton admits that they just keep bringing him back to this same place, shut him down, and press the reset button until they have another target ready for him. They program his memory to think that the next victim is the one that killed his wife, and he goes on to say that she's not actually dead. Sure enough, Dalton shuts him down, and they refill him with nanites. Back upstairs, we see that they're revamping his memories to fit what they want him to believe. When KT arrives on the control floor, Emile confronts her about sticking to the script. She doesn't understand what the big deal is when they just erase his memory anyways, but they assure her that it's absolutely necessary to follow what has been put in front of her. She's so stuck in this job, though. She even pieces together that if she walks away and quits, they'll just shut off her breathing apparatus. So much for free will. But I guess you don't get that option when you're rebuilt by a corporation. Emile assures her that this is the last one before they take this to the market, but it still doesn't sit right with her. Emile sends her to reset Ray's bunk, and they change his memory of Martin killing his wife to that of Nick Barris. Nick is Emile's ex-partner, and he's also the man that Martin had called right before he got killed. After they go through the whole spiel of waking him up and introducing him to everyone, they play the song again, and his new fake memories flood through. He leaves the building to kill Nick Barris, and everything goes according to plan. When Ray gets ready to leave, Nick's worker sets off an EMP that shuts him down. Later, we see Nick's friend Wiggins wake him up in a makeshift computer lab, and he tells him how he waited for him to finish off Nick so he could go ahead with his own plan. While he sits there on the table, Ray gets recollections of how he thought his wife was murdered by a different person over and over. That'd be a little maddening to see the same part of your subconscious play over and over, but the key part is different every time. Sort of like deja vu, but each time it's the wrong person. Once Wiggins hears this, he begins to understand how every kill seemed like a personal vendetta had been played out. After hearing all of this, he begins to think that Gina could really still be out there. Before he leaves, he cuts his hand to drain some blood into a cup so Wiggins can figure out how to keep him from being reprogrammed again. As he leaves the facility, Emil sees him on the GPS again, and he sends Tibbs and Dalton after him. When Ray shows up on Gina's doorstep, she's more than surprised to see him there. After they embrace each other, he mentions that he's home and Gina wonders why they're having this conversation again. Soon, Gina's daughter shows up, and Ray questions how long it's been since she last saw him. After she tells him that it's been five years since she last saw him, he disappears from her doorstep and never says another word to her again. As he leaves in the car, he ends up getting rammed off the road by Dalton and Tibbs, who immediately start to attack him to bring him in. Dalton attacks him with electrical rounds, and Tibbs hops onto a bike as he shoots cameras into the sky so he can see. Here we go, this is what I've been waiting for this whole time. When you hear about a super soldier movie, you don't just look forward to him mowing through a bunch of regular grunts. That's fun to watch and all, but you want some epic, tense battles. Super soldier versus super soldier. This isn't quite that, but we're getting closer. After a truck hits Ray and Dalton, Dalton's left with his prosthetic leg shattered, and Tibbs speeds up just in time to stab Ray with a spike that allows headquarters to re-establish connection. After they shut Ray down, Emil tells KT to handle Wiggins while he goes to deal with Ray. 
At first, she tries to resist, but when Emil shuts down her prosthetic airway, she sees that she has no choice but to cooperate. KT retrieves Wiggins, and Ray gets some one-on-one -on -one time with Emil. Ray finds himself in a neutral space with Emil, and he finally gets to question him on how much he really knows about him. Emil talks to him like he gave him a purpose and a second chance, but Ray doesn't see it that way. Just when Ray gets worked up about ending everything, Emil shuts off the pathway, and they get ready to end the contract. When KT gets back to the facility, Dalton tells her that they're about to pull out the nanites and shut him down. KT decides to tell Emil that she wasn't able to find Wiggins, and Emil decides to give Ray one last run to track Wiggins down. KT hops into the sim with Ray to break it all down, and we see that she gives Wiggins access in the van in the garage. Now this is pure genius. It doesn't really explain how KT plans to make it out of this alive, but it's time for everyone to get ready for the big showdown. I think it's time for our hero to take on all the bad guys in the tower. Oh, Jesus. 20 quid he just said, oh, Jesus. I need real friends! Right there with you, Wiggins. But even he seems excited for what comes next. Who wouldn't be? Emil finally breaks into the room that Katie's holed up in, and he tries to shut her airways down again. It turns out that KT actually got Wiggins to reprogram her so that he can't do that again. As KT's plans play out, Ray breaks free of the corporation's control and goes on his way to exact his real revenge. Emil calls Dalton and Tibbs to arms as a last resort to deal with Ray, and they suit up to take him down. Meanwhile, KT burns down the servers that are all programmed for Ray's nanites, and Ray comes face to face with Dalton. Here we go, super soldier epic battle, yes! Dalton and Ray fight to the death on the 76th floor, until Ray tackles him into the elevator shaft where Tibbs jumps down to meet him. As the elevator careens down the side of the high-rise, there comes a time that Tibbs and Ray are in danger of falling to their death. Dalton causes Tibbs to fall to his death, but Ray is able to grab hold of Dalton and pull him down to the ground floor. When Ray hits the ground, his nanites start to overload, but he still decides to come after Emil who's trying to escape in his vehicle. Emil shoots explosive rounds at Ray until his nanites run out. Eventually, Emil thinks that he's won, and he tells Ray that he's literally just Ray now. And that's enough. That's right, and they all go BOOM! Soon we hear KT and Wiggins arguing over how long he's taking to get something going, and suddenly, Ray opens his eyes again. Wiggins takes a sigh of relief once he realizes that Ray remembers everything, and he explains that he doesn't have to recharge at all anymore. When Ray goes out to meet with KT, he sits down to watch the horizon with her, and he stops her from apologizing for being a part of everything before. As Ray and KT hop into their jeep, they ride off into the sunset, and the credits roll. Personally, I'd been waiting for this movie to come out ever since the first trailer dropped. While it might not necessarily be a new or groundbreaking story, the technology's amazing, and the visuals are just really cool. CGI Vin Diesel on the elevator might look a little dated, but the amount of times his body got reconstructed with nanites is enough to make me forget about that. Give it a shot! Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.